Hello everyone, this is Surter from Slytherin and in this series of short videos I will be explaining you some of the core mechanics behind Scourge of War Waterloo, the upcoming strategy game by Norps of Death and the Slytherin group. So if you're not yet familiar with Scourge of War, uh, with the Scourge of War series, Scourge of War is all about making you feel like a commander of a huge battlefield and you can take either command of the full army yourself by playing as Wellington, Napoleon or Blücher or you can choose as to operate as a minor cog within this huge war machine, taking orders from above and executing them to the best of your abilities. Let's have a quick look at the battlefield here. Here we can see just how big this battle is already and it's not even the biggest battle um, you can fight. Um, this is a core level battle, whereas the army level battles of course have several cores in them, um, so they can be much much bigger. And also we got at our backs a huge number of troops as well, cavalry formations, uh, infantry formations as well, and of course our own artillery batteries are pounding away. The game comes with 20 scenarios packed with a uh, from all sides, so you can play scenarios from the French, English and Prussian sides. Uh, in addition, the game comes with a sandbox generator, so you can uh, generate your own skirmishes on the fly very quickly on every uh, level of command or any size you would prefer. The game has real-time multiplayer as well, so up to 32 people, that's quite a lot actually, can jump in and play either co-op or uh, uh, versus each other, challenge each other. And on top of that, for the first time in the series, Scourge of War comes with the campaign layer. Um, so a uh, strategic layer in order to uh, link all your sandbox skirmishes together. So that's it for, uh, for the first episode for today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun with the game.